Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you today on this sheath system that I just put together uh, for Gino down in Maryland. So Gino sent me his, jeez, um, I don't even, I'm not really sure what to call this thing. It has a very similar uh, build to like an Exotac fire rod. Uh, it's from a company called Laix. I'm not sure if I can pronounce that. Uh, L-A-I-X. It's definitely a Chinese company. Um, well, or Asian, I'm not sure. I think it's Chinese lettering on there, but I won't presume to know how to pronounce it. Uh, but anyway, you can see it does have this little watertight housing with a ferro rod stowed in there. On the other side, you've got a housing with uh, some tinder. On that end cap, you have a little compass. Then up at the top, you have a striker and that top cap also has a rescue whistle. So <clears throat> a lot of really cool stuff packed into that little gadget. Um, so anyway, he sent that to me and he sent me a browning saw with a gut hook, this little hand saw, a little hunting knife from, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's a hunting knife technically, but this little drop point from uh, White River. It's a really cool knife, S35VN. I've only worked on a few White Rivers, but I've really loved everything they've made. Uh, just very comfortable in hand and quality build. So we got that. And lastly, we have this Buck Knives Hoodlum. You can see that there. So. This thing's a very long knife. It's got a really nice big finger choil. And it's actually surprisingly light, but when you're kind of twisting the wrist like that, you can feel that it would have some good heft, some good forward momentum for chopping. So um, really cool knives. Very unique little setup we have here. And actually, <clears throat> before I go too much further, just uh, indulge me one second to adjust something. I had the uh, I had the hardware that was holding the, the White River sheath on just a little bit too tight, so it was actually just a little bit difficult to get my fingers in there and grab the knife out. But um, yeah, now it feels pretty good. All right, so um, anyway, this is all in chocolate brown and flat black and. Um, Gino asked me if I could make this sheath to carry on a tech lock. He wanted the tech lock to be centered roughly where the uh, blade and handle meet. So you can see roughly about halfway up this tech lock is where the blade meets the handle. You can see that sort of midpoint across those centered eyelets right there. Uh, so I think I did a good job with that. And the reason why you would want it to ride up there, the tech lock to be up there, is because that drops the blade just a little bit lower. Normally, you would see a tech lock mounted to the eyelets along the side right here, but that would put the blade significantly higher. And when you're talking about a long blade like this, that's just not a comfortable position to draw in. I mean, it can certainly be done, but uh, I don't personally like it, and uh, I guess Gino probably doesn't either. So now you got that a bit lower, that's much more feasible to draw that out. So anyway, I can do that for you. And the cool thing about this particular type of um, plate that I make for this is that it's got these three eyelets, or not eyelets, but drill holes that you're able to go into. But I've also embedded hardware in two other positions. So you can actually orient this tech lock in multiple positions that include horizontal, not that you'd need it for a knife this big, um, but that's just that's just residual. Vertical and horizontal are the same for a tech lock. Uh, but you could also cant it and carry it like so for a nice comfortable cross draw. Um, so you do have that option. And then, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I lost my train of thought. 
but in any event, you do have multiple positions. Oh yeah, the other thing. Uh, because these are just in a straight line, you can actually move the tech lock down and have it through these rows or through these. So, uh, so you do have ride height options as well as uh, position options, which is pretty cool. So, <clears throat> and the uh, the plate itself gives you just enough standoff that the tech lock doesn't interfere with the mouth of the sheath, which is a problem. If it does, if it's touching it, then that can actually inhibit the knife from drawing smoothly because the mouth won't be able to spread for the knife to actually pass through. So. Anyway, you can hear it's got a nice click, it's got a nice comfortable thumb ramp on it, and just about ballistic draw for a knife so big. I mean, certainly when you, uh, when you have it tilted at all, you're going to lose that sheath right off the knife, nice and smooth. Um, we have this little white river, has a pretty smooth draw to it. Um, this one I'm actually molding for retention right on the uh, blade stock itself, right behind this finger groove. Um, so it's a little bit different from my standard, but this handle doesn't really have anything to grab onto if you look at it. Um, I could probably use this point right here, but if you think about how high up that is, I would have to have the sheath go all the way up, you know, halfway to your pinky, which just doesn't seem uh, very practical. So. Why do that when I could do this? And then uh, finally this saw with gut hook. Uh, I had to get a little bit creative for the molding. You can see that this cavern really looks more like a, looks like a giant popsicle stick or something. It doesn't really have the contour of the saw so much. You can kind of see that gut hook right there at the end. But I had to fill that space out and do a little bit of a build out just to make sure that that gut hook could draw smoothly through the kydex because you don't, you really don't want to be snagging um, anything, especially when you have, uh, you know, these saw teeth to worry about. So if there's any kind of hitch and you tilt it, the saw is just going to start chewing up the kydex on the inside. Um, and it probably would never get to the point where the sheath is in any kind of real danger, but you'd always have those little flakes of kydex in there. It's just, it just doesn't look as good. So the idea with this sheath is, um, you know, this particular one, I don't think you know, it doesn't really need a thumb ramp or anything like that. I would say really probably maybe just put your palm or use the thumb ramp on the white river to kind of brace your hand and then use your other fingers on that push dagger style handle and just, just rip it out. Um, it does have excellent retention. It doesn't really have a click going back in so much, but the retention is such that it did survive my shake test. Nothing on this is going to fall out on you. Um, and yeah, this is pretty nice. Um, just one last thing. The rod is a two way draw, so you can, you can put it in either direction. Um, and Gino asked me specifically not to use shot cord on this. He did not want cord on this sheath. So the holder is just a little bit tight. So you're going to have to, I mean, I guess since it's braced on your, on your hip of the tech lock anyway, uh, you can probably pull it off one-handed, but it's not going to be a very smooth draw. And the reason, you know, it's fine. It'll work just fine like that. But the reason it's not going to be smooth is because um, there are actual variances in the diameter throughout the width or the length of this shaft. So when I molded it onto it, um, essentially the tip is a little bit tighter because the compass end of this is just slightly wider. So if you have the rod all the way down you can move it pretty easily it doesn't just move on its own but you can move it pretty easily and then if you slide it up and push that compass just inside the housing of this holder then all of a sudden it becomes pretty solid again um, so you know you can carry this a number of different ways personally I think this is the way that looks the best um, and it's not gonna it's not going to rattle around or flop on you and you can always take that D ring off too. This is not really, uh, the only function it's performing is acting as a stopper when you go to put it into the rod, uh, into the, the holder. But, uh, you could remove that D ring and just find a point where it feels tense inside the, the holder here and you'll be just fine. It's not going anywhere. So 
All right, so that's all I got for you guys on this. This is a really cool project. I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I got to actually send this out real quick because Gino is getting ready to, I think he said he's going overseas or going, going somewhere. He's going on a trip. Uh, so I told him I would get this to him by Thursday of next week. So Gino, buddy, I hope you like this sheath. I appreciate your business. And uh, let me know how this thing works out for you. I think this came out great. So, all right, guys, if you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my channel I ask you to subscribe to it and uh, definitely share this with your friends comment down below let me know what you think of it and uh, appreciate you tuning in stick around for the next one God bless